Hello there and welcome to this casual Python tutorial in which we're going to test ChatGPT and its ability to solve beginners Python challenges. Of course, for that purpose, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a video of mine um, that is roughly two years ago published and it contains 10 Python challenges for beginners. So what we're going to do is just feed ChatGPT with the instructions that I have within this video and see how well it does. I'm not going to play the video, I'll just pause at, at every challenge and we're going to send the instructions and see whether the, whether the output is um, good enough or not. So I'm going to just minimize this a little bit or maybe make it a bit smaller, the window, so we can see um, also the instructions. So the first task is write a program, oh, I should pause the video as well, write a program that allows the user to enter the width and length of a room, the program output or program should output the area of the room. This should be written in Python. Now this is of course um, obvious in the video itself as it is, well, the title is 10 Python challenges for beginners, but it's not that obvious when I provide instructions. So let's see whether this makes any sense. Okay, so, so far what I like is that there are already comments. So at the beginning, we can see that this is a program to calculate the area of a room. Then the next steps are get the dimensions. So the width and the length. This is also quite... Um... So what I like right off the bat is it has nice structure. So you know what's happening in each segment. What I'm not a big fan of is it already decided what is the unit of measurement, so it's square feet, right? So that is going to be mentioned in the output, but it's nowhere mentioned in the, basically where we, uh, where we get the input of the users, right? So that's something that we don't really have. So here we should ha also have entered the length of the room in feet or in meters or in whatever uh, unit of measurement it is. So that's something that I'm personally missing because if the um, if if the input is structured in this way, maybe somebody will just enter five feet or ten feet, and then if that is the case, of course that cannot be converted into float, and that would result into an error. So overall, I think it does a good job into structuring, but it should not be left uh, unsupervised. Probably just like any other um, technology, but in general, it is it is it is a good tool that can assist in this process. So let's take a look at the next one. So number two, calculating tax and tip, write a program that allows the users to input the cost of a meal, excluding tax and tip. So that should be the input of the user. Then the program calculates tax of 10% and adds tip of 15% on top of the after tax amount. The output is a sentence that includes the cost of the meal, the amount of tax, the tip and the total amount. So write a Python program that allows the user to input the cost of a meal excluding tax and tip. Then the program calculates tax of 10% and adds tip of 15% on top of the after tax amount. The output should, output should be a sentence that includes the cost of the meal. So this is the original cost, the amount of tax, the tip and the total amount. So this is, of course, for a beginner, it's not that complex, um, but it, it, of course, it, it requires some structuring to put in place. So the program to calculate, okay, so we have already a nice title or a, a comment for what the script is. So here it's again, of course, we did not specify the currency, but it's, it's unclear in which currency is the cost of the meal. Then what it does is it calculates the text, the text amount correctly, but the tip is 15% on top of the cost. Although I clearly mentioned that the tip should be on top of the after tax amount. So the tax including, so that the tip should be on the amount including tax. So this is something that obviously doesn't do a good job in 
understanding when there's something some more complexity into the instructions but okay um this is why this is a video just to test to see how well it does of course um, the only difference that should be here is um, just add cost multiplied by the one plus tax and then multiplied by um, the tip or actually i mean you can structure it in different ways you can just do it the same way it is, as it is done now but you have to add the tax uh, on top of that total okay uh, print the output okay so it, it's in four different sentences it could have been of course into one um so what I would change here is, of course, outside of the, the formula calculation that is not accurate. I would also add the currency, although here it mentioned dollars, it's not mentioned, mentioned here. And if, of course, again, someone mentions five dollars, then it cannot be converted into float. So these are some minor tweaks. Um, yeah, so this just kind of provides um, an explanation of what, what it did. So overall, it's not bad, but it's not 100% accurate. Let's take a look at what is the next one. Calculating compounded interest. Could you please write, and it's always important to be nice to AI because you never know when, where it will um, get to in the future. So just be nice just in case. Um, can, could you please write a Python script that takes users input, which would be the amount of money invested annual interest rate or let's say rate of return is 7.5 percent the output should be a calculation of the amount of money invested should i should i structure it as amount of money invested or should i maybe i'll keep the same original instructions um, the amount of money the user would have if the money are invested Money is investor. Or is this a singular or a plural? For one, two, five, and ten years. I'm not sure if. It yes, it should be is. But all right. So, again, we have a very nice comments. Enter the amount of investment. All right. It converts it into float. Year one, it multiplies. Okay. So this is actually the calculation goes. Perfect. Um, th this is perfect, as far as I can tell from the calculation. I would again mention the, the dollars here. And speaking of this kind of inputs, it's also good to have some sort of a, a loop so that if the, the user input isn't valid, that it kind of returns back one step. Um, at the moment, that's not the case. So if somebody enters um, anything that cannot be converted into float, there's nothing. So it makes sense to have a some sort of a loop that if the the, the input isn't valid it kind of returns hey um, the input uh, cannot be converted into float for example or of course for if, if it's a program that will be used by someone without python knowledge it should be structured the response should be structured uh, in, a, in a more meaningful way so that it just mentions what actually is going wrong but overall other than that i mean structure looks good the comments look Great. The calculation is, is perfect, so it, it makes it makes sense what it does. Um, count the number of vowels or consonants in text. So, could you please write a Python script or program that would take the user's input, which could be a word, sentence or a large piece of text it uh, would count the number of vowels and consonants in the user's input the output would be a short sentence with the number of vowels and consonants in the provided text also run this script for the following user's input. Hello there, how are you doing? I want to make sure that there is some input because of course, obviously I, I won't be able to, um, to modify the script unless I just copy it into my own IDE. All right, so 
we get the text in that case that that's perf perfectly fine all right um oh, and it's an interesting uh it's an interesting solution um So here, what I would change, it's a, it's a minor change, but you can also, I'll wait until I have something to drink. Hope you do something. Uh, you have something as well. I mean, it, hopefully it won't be a too long video. Hmm. Is this correct? Are there six vowels? E O E E O A. -E. There are more vowels for sure. But I don't think this is fully correct. Cannot be right. Because we have E O, that's two. Then we have four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And a lot more consonants. So what goes wrong? So obviously, what I would personally do, maybe just, um, I can debug this a bit later, but what I would do is I would take the text and make sure it's all lowercase. Then, of course, if the character is... Um, all you need to do is count the characters that are basically these five, right? right? A, E, I, O, U. Then you can get those. Then what I would do is I would probably maybe also even remove this the space and, and tabs and stuff like that. Um, and if it, if it's pure text, if there's if there if there are no numbers, then that's quite easy because you can just subtract the total number of characters minus the the vowels, but it is, I think some, probably something goes wrong here, because this doesn't make sense. This isn't, this, this is just... I mean, based on this, there's, there's 18 characters and, and they're they're way more in in the sentence so obviously again this is something that re needs a little bit more work not a lot because again structure wise it does a really good job um so i mean i will probably use chat gpt to generate some structure but then i will definitely look into the code myself and and so overall i think it probably it would pass a beginner's interview for sure. I mean, if, if you get someone to do something like this in a, such a short period of time, then. All right, let's take a look at the next one. Calculate total invoice price. I assume that probably this will be something similar with the previous one where we had the, the tax and tip mixed. Um, could you please write a Python script? Oh, is it program, let's use the same terms. So let's take a look at how we should um, the phone invoice. Okay, that calculates the total invoice price, don't you? So the number, the invoice depends on the number of minutes spent on calls, the number of text messages sent and the internet used. The price, price per, Minute is one three dollars. Price text message is zero point three, and the price per one gigabyte is two dollars. In addition, this is making it a bit more complex, but all right. Every invoice, or I should the invoice should include three percent charge for the customer support and has a 10% VAT. Um, maybe what I'll do is, because again, it, it might do a good job in generating, but I like to also test it. So let's assume that in the month of October, 
the total minutes spent were 10. Minutes spent on calls were 10. There were 5 messages sent and 2 gigabytes of, of internet used. Um, I'll leave the last segment if there's a, a discount if it's paid within 15 days. So I'd like to just add that a little later just to see how well it does in, in terms of the, um, the, the logic or the building. Okay, so what I like already is that it, it does a good job in identifying the, the variables and it, it starts with just laying them uh, at the very beginning of the script. So that makes a lot of sense. Enter the number of minutes spent on calls. All right, then that, that, great. So the three main inputs are also there. Service cost is equal to minutes times price, texts and internet price per gigabyte. And then the total cost is the service cost plus um so actually almost gets it right almost as it doesn't calculate VAT on top of the customer support fee so basically the service cost plus the service cost times VAT that's the total cost and VAT the customer support fee isn't included uh, but other than that it looks it looks very nice so 20.6 is this correct if if what we have because what we had was 10 10 5 and 2 right so that should be 13 All right so maybe i'll just let's take a calculator quickly 10 5 and 2 so 10 times 1.3 5, that's 1.5, and 2 times 2 is 4, and then we should have, so this is already a bit odd, um, it, it should also take the customer support fee, and then it should take the 1.1, so the 20.6, it's, Am I making a mistake here, or is it the minute spent on calls is 10, right? So that's that should be already 13. Price per text is, so you have five text messages times 0 0.3. That's 1.5. And then we have two. So again, 13 plus 1.5 plus, and this should be price. So four, that's 18 and a half. The, I'm not sure how it gets. So this, this again, it, it's doesn't seem accurate but i'm wondering if i use this in a i wouldn't expect that this is the outcome is it well what i'm going to do is i'll just open a uh, a python id and see let's see let me name it as python chat gpt test i mean i'm curious to see um, yep, let's run it. So enter the number of minutes spent in calls, 10. Number of text messages was 5, and then 2 gigabytes used, 2335. So, yeah, uh, this is not fully correct, because what we should do is, of course, um, what I would structure is I would add these two together, and then multiply it by 1 plus the VAT, which is 1.1, and then it would be correct. But obviously, if you take a look at ChatGPT, right? If we take a look at the outcome, this doesn't add up with what's actually the output of the script. So for some reason, there's something that, that goes wrong that yeah, we cannot identify based on the script because the script looks great, except for the calculation um, error for the rest. You know, not, nothing to add. Let's move with the next one. Number six, total entrance fee. Um, the entrance fee, to be honest, I'm not sure if I want, maybe I'll do it just because, just to see if, if ChatGPT does, has a good understanding of, of the, of the input, but I mean, overall, this looks quite comparable to, to many others. Uh, the entrance fee for visiting an amusement park depends on the age for guests younger than 10 for guests. Okay. Okay. Um, could you please 
write a Python program that calculates the total entrance fee. For guests younger than 10, the price 10 years old, the price is 17. For guests younger than 21, the price is 20. And for guests that are 21 and older, the price is 24. The program should um, take an input for the number of guests in should I use it in, the, in like three age groups? Should take an input for the number of guests and their respective uh, number of guests per age. Per number of guests in three in the three different groups. Let's see. So basically, the way it should be ideally structured is how many guests are under 10 how many are basically between 10 and 20 and 20 right should be and then it should be uh so yeah so indeed this is this is what i think is not going perfect um because obviously we would be double counting if you if you have um if, if you're basically inputting based on the age and not taking into account that, for example, those that are under 10 shouldn't be also under 21. Oh, that's strange. Yeah, I noticed that they have sometimes an issue because there are many, uh, many users, but I probably will get to the same output. So, the logic here is, of course, quite simple, and and it does a very good job in in structuring. Again, we have the these fixed prices at the beginning, very important and also easy to modify. Um, the only thing I would change is I would structure the input number of guests under ten, number of guests between, for example, ten and twenty, and then twenty one on or all or over, um, because otherwise, of course, if if we just um, have the input based on the age. We we are definitely double double counting. But other than that, I mean, it looks quite nice. The structure is quite nice. Um, it's not that difficult to follow. So definitely a, a useful tool uh, that can be used. Number seven. Find the largest word in a text. All right. Give it a try. Number seven. Could you please write a Python program that allows the user to to input text and the the program should identify the length of the longest word or words if more words have the same length and it it did a separate sense. It should return a sentence that contains the length of the longest word or words and the word or words. So what I would like to do here is of course take a look at the structure, but I also want to test this um this program if I provide an input when there where we have one obviously a large word, but also there's um, an, an input where we have two words that are both equal and largest, just to see whether um, whether it does a good job identifying that. But it's definitely a nice tool. I mean, uh, look, if you have questions, it, it it does a very good job. So it, it splits the text into a list of words. Longest word, so it starts to zero, and then it, of course, it adds. Um, if the world, if the word is longer than the current longest, update the longest and clear the list. Okay, okay. Okay. 
Okay. I mean... Yeah, so it, the logic here is quite nice. Of course, I, I think it probably would have done exactly the same way. So this makes sense. So you're basically checking each word, and then if the word that you're checking is the longest, add it in the list longest words, if not. But if it is the same length, add it to the list. So if the length of the word is exactly the same as the longest. Okay, and here, of course, it what it does is it, it has one sentence that it has S in brackets, if we have one or two. Um, also, there's, I think it would be much, much better even if we have like a simple if loop, if there's one longest word, then print this sentence in singular form, so there's word, and then if there's more than one, then we have words. Um, could you... Um, Test the last script with the following input. Mm. What would be nice? 10 challenges for noobs. I'm one of those noobs as well. So obviously challenges should be the, the, the largest word. I mean, again, obviously this is this isn't seven characters, but I also don't think that again it's it's being tested on the same on the same program. So I think this is well written. This the outcome doesn't make sense, but of course there's we can figure that out quickly. Let me quickly open again the. The last that we had and then we can test it out i doubt that this makes sense i mean this is a nice uh, a nice project to have some fun but in in in, in no shape or form is it so 10 python challenges for noobs right Ah, and it's also interesting that it, I don't think it, it would work. Oh, okay. Yeah, so 10, 10 characters make sense. And let's take, um, hello, how is every, how is, should I do it? Or maybe just, let's make it simple. Hello, how are you doing? So we should have obviously two, two words. Huh. Yeah, of course. Now the issue that it has here is this is being counted as one because the way that the script is currently structured, it splits everything into words, but basically the split is the space. So this is a split, which means this is a word. And this is a split and, and then this is a whole word, which isn't fully correct. So maybe the, the first step is to remove these characters question mark, comma, and so on, and then do the split and, and everything else. So it can be improved. It's not, again, it's not that bad. It, it re just requires a little bit of testing and then, yeah, looks good. Looks good to me. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm honestly quite happy with the outcome. Uh, it's not perfect, but it's, it's quite good. Um, all right, this is something that shouldn't be that difficult, I would, I would expect. Could you please write a Python program that simulates flipping? I'm just wondering now whether it, what, what would be the, like this, how it would think of simulates. Is it going to be just a random between two, like one or zero or one or so? Let's see. The program would flip the coin a hundred. Oh as many times as necessary until there are 100 tails. It would return the number of coin flips that were necessary 
for the 100 tails. So of course, on average, it should, the answer should be 200, um, but I'm interested just to see the, the logic, the structure. It's also a great learning tool, uh, in my opinion. Of course, random makes sense. Uh, okay, so while we have less than 100 tails, keep flipping the, the coin. Yeah, and then it basically just does a random between zero and one. Is that correct? Then I guess, is this zero and one? Mm hmm. Yeah. It just generates between zero and one. So, well, 246. Um, I'll try to regenerate response. It would be the same, but maybe. Could you rerun? Or I'll just try to do it this way, just to see if, if something um, different pops out. But obviously, it's it's a nice structure. Like the structure is probably it's 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 thrown sight at at this very moment. This is something that I think anyone can use, regardless if if you're a beginner or or maybe more advanced in in writing Python scripts. But the structure is is I I really like it. Um, the logic is also quite well explained. Um, Obviously, in some uh, Python versions, you might need to convert this into string, so you get only um, you don't get an, an error. Could you could you please run the last script, last program you shared, just to see if we get to somewhere on two hundred? All right. Uh, all right. All right. You liar, of course you can, but okay, that's fine. That is fine, that is fine. That is fine. You don't have to be sorry, chat GPT, everything's fine. Let's see, number nine, calculating taxi fare. Um, all right. So basically up until now, you have an idea of what to expect. Good structure, nice comments, and likely as in this, as in all the other cases, the very beginning of the script will be the these fixed segments, so what is the price that's in this case fixed, the, the fixed part of $4 per, per trip and of 2.4 for every kilometer traveled. Um, so let's see. Could you please write a Python program that calculates taxi fare of the user? Oh, yeah, user is also fine. The taxi fare consists of a fixed part amounting to four dollars per trip and the variable part that amounts to 2.4 for every kilometer traveled um it would return the total taxi fare of the user also can you run this program for Also, could you please run this program for a for a user that used a taxi for ten kilometers? So the answer, well, we we it should be at least right two point four times ten, so twenty four plus four twenty eight. Yeah, so exactly. This is this is what we should expect. The fixed and variable fare are very big at the very beginning. Now it's interestingly enough because we've specified the the measurement in this case in kilometers, it is mentioned in initially. But of course, the same challenge is what if the input is um, I don't know ten kilometers? Then it cannot be converted into float. So there is no kind of a a way to figure that out. So fixed fare plus distance times, times variable. Um, yeah, this is this part. It, it just doesn't make sense because this is all well set. I mean, the, this this is running perfectly perfectly fine. I mean, I'm I can cannot imagine that doesn't make sense. Yeah, the twenty. This this makes sense. Um, the code is correct. The outcome for some reason it just 
doesn't do a good job. It's it's as if it's running completely different uh, different script. I don't know if it's, it just seems a bit odd. A bit it's a bit odd. So if I was uh, using this, I wouldn't rely too much on on the results. I would only rely on this and then of course revise it. But we have one more, um, calculate delivery fee. So writing function that calculates the delivery fee that consists on fixing the variable part. Okay, this is a bit more complex. Orders below 100 have a fee of $5 plus 5% of the order value. Orders between 100 and 500. Okay, this should be a bit more complex, but let's see. I mean, maybe we'll be completely surprised. Could you please write a Python? program that calculates delivery fee that consists of fixed and variable part. If an order is below 100, the delivery is equal to $5 plus 5% 5 of the order value. If the order is, or if the, if should I have is if the value of the order if the value of the order is between 100 and 500 the delivery fee is equal to ten dollars plus two percent of the order value if the value of the order is above 500 the delivery fee is Fifteen dollars plus one percent of the total order value. Could you please um, run this program for the for th the following three orders? Uh, let's make it fifty, two fifty, and a thousand. It's definitely a lot of fun to work with this. Okay, so enter the value of the order. Okay, it converts into float. And again, we don't have any, any currency, but that's all right. So if the order is under 100, under 500, and then this is, this, is, this is so far perfect, right? I mean, if it's under 100, we have 5 plus 5%. 5 if it's under 500 perfect and then if the if, it, if that's not the case basically it's above 500 i have 15 plus one percent i mean this is this is 100 percent correct so the, the the if statements the elif statements 100 percent 100 percent correct of course this last part i wouldn't uh know if it even makes sense to look into that but maybe maybe it does let's let's quickly take a look into that right so the first one, what we had was $50, right? So if we have $50, basically what we should expect is 5 multiplied by 0 0.05 plus 5. Sorry, 50 times 0 0.05 plus 5. So it should be 7.5. Okay, that one's correct. Then the next one we have is 250, right? So 250 times 0 0.02 plus 10, right, so it should be 15, 12 and a half. So, yeah, I mean, it doesn't make sense to go, but all right. 1000 multiplied 0, 0, 001 plus 15, 25, 25 and a half. So, it's, yeah, this part, again, I wouldn't rely too much on. This part is definitely, let's see if I, let's try it last time. So if it was 50, great, seven and a half. If it's 250, 15. And if it's a thousand, we have 25. So something goes wrong. But overall, I mean, it's it's an impressive tool that can add value um, to many who are in, in this, whether it's, it's, whether you're at the beginning of this journey to kind of learn Python or whether you're intermediate or advanced, I think there's there's value that can be extracted from this tool, so. That would be all regarding this video. It was quite a long one probably, but I hope that you enjoyed it. And make sure that you make use of what's of all the tools available for you out there. And as always,